good morning sale. How are you, darling? I got a lot of crunchy stuff cutting up over here this morning. I promised you my incredibly versatile um, black bean and corn salad. I've got some corn over here in the steamer coming up to color. And I've got onions and some peppers here to cut up. Well, look at all these folks. Hello, Kathy. Hello, Denise. Um, so, stickers on them. Ugh, meh. I think you get them all and then you go. So, this is one of my family's most favorite things that I make. Um, and I have here both black beans and some pineapple uh, because I want to show you how incredibly versatile this is. You know, in French cooking, there's mirepoix, which is basically the basis of everything, which is carrots, onions, and celery. And in Cajun or Creole cooking, it's bell peppers, onions, and celery. Well, this is my holy trinity. Onions, bell peppers, and garlic. That is, to me, basically the basis of anything you might want to make. And so, I have so simple, you know, they say that there's like five ingredient dishes and those are the best. So, I literally have done nothing except rinse off a can of Goya beans. I have a couple of ears of corn that I got at Trader Joe's because I don't know where the hell corn is coming from, but even out of season corn on the cob is always more delicious than corn out of a can. Um, so beans and corn, red onion, bell pepper, garlic, jalapeno, cilantro, and a lime vinaigrette. That's the whole dish. But the great thing about this is that it is so flexible that I'm gonna make the same thing, only instead of beans and corn, I'm gonna use pineapple, I'm gonna use spring onions instead of red onions, and I'm gonna use mint instead of cilantro. Both of these dishes are perfect things, like for your beach house. You can use, you can put fish on them. I, the really, for the black bean salad, if you can skewer up some big shrimp and get them on a screaming grill and char them up, that's just, imagine just a big platter and lay them all out, that's fantastic. A nice, beautiful white fish is absolutely amazing on top of the pineapple. Now, I bought this, I was, I was lazy this morning when I ran to get jalapeno and a couple of other things I didn't have in the house. So I just got the already cut up pineapple because I stayed in bed till nine o'clock this morning. So there's that. Um, anyway, so let's see, where should we start? I think we'll start with, I'm gonna do this for myself and clear out some space here on my cutting board. Since I'm gonna put the spring onions in with the pineapple, I'm gonna put that into the smaller bowl because I'm gonna have beans and corn going into the other one, so I'm gonna use the larger bowl for that. So I can put this here. Let me go ahead and finish cutting up my jalapeno, so then I can get that off. I'm kinda of cutting into my cutting here, so I don't have enough cutting space going on today. So here we go. Yikes, so there's some. That's probably just about right for my pineapple salsa. Here we go. Beautiful, beautiful. And then I can take my red onion and put it over here. I really need one of those Rachel Ray scooper things. It is literally in my Amazon uh, shopping cart, but I keep my, I've been using my Amazon shopping cart really almost like a shopping list. And every couple of days I go and look at it and I go, oh look, I got that when I was at Whole Foods the other day. So that doesn't need to be on this shopping list anymore. And I keep thinking that as long as I can keep from having to have mail brought in, you know, package brought into the house, then that means that the UPS guys have something else to do, along with the always overworked Amazon workers. So that's just one little thing that I can do to not make it harder to get things done during this time. So let's get the rest of this. Uh, yikes, I'm always afraid I'm gonna chop my hand off. Um, Hugo was telling me last night that a friend of somebody's was um, 
sorry about the airplane going over. Oh, I guess those are the blue angels maybe going over. There you go. So just full disclosure, my friend Vicki Laurelard is here. We are practicing uh, uh, social distancing, but she has been in lockdown as long as I have, so I feel confident. So hello, Mark Knowles. How's life in, San, in Los Angeles? And hello, Gladys. Hello, Jeannie. Hello, Ramona. How are you, darling? Hello, Leah and Jimmy and Carol and Joe. Hello to all of you guys. So I'm slowly but surely getting my pieces of the salads put together here. So now I'm just going to cut up some of this bell pepper. There we go. So if you just are tuning in, we believe that the Blue Angels just went over my house. It was very noisy for a few seconds. And being a New Yorker, it didn't even faze me until I realized my friend was yelling from the other room. Um, oh my, I just got a little bit of jalapeno juice on my sweet bell pepper. That is a really, really spicy jalapeno. Now, back in the day, before, um, before we had the fear of COVID-19, I would have told you my favorite little, pardon me, trick for knowing if you're getting a good jalapeno or not, and I would always just rub it with my thumb and then lick my thumb really quickly, and then you'd know if you were going to get a good hot pepper or not. Um, and so, but you can't, I don't really feel like I can, uh, encourage that sort of behavior now. Uh, let's see. Um, oh yes. So Hugo was telling me last night that a friend of his parents who lives on Long Island in quarantine decided that the one handy thing that he could do around the house was to trick out the birdhouse. It had been many years since he had built it. And so he went into his shop and he cut his finger off with his table saw. All of his sons are like high level police officers. He couldn't get into a hospital to get his finger reattached. So guys, put down the power tools. This is not the time, all right? So imagine you've made it to 70 years old with all of your body parts and a bird feeder takes it away. So. Anyway, there you go. That's the story. <laughs> um, I know it's a terrible story. Sorry for the laughter. That's very schadenfreude-y of me. But, you know, it's like I saw the other day. A smart person looks for traffic coming on a one-way street. A wise person looks both ways anyway. So, uh, that's my thought for the day. Put down the power tools. See, I'm sitting here thinking, I wonder how much I've cut while I've been talking and not paying attention. I did that actually a few years ago. Golly gee, close to 20 years ago. Some of you know I used to have a little wine store down in the East Village. And I taught a Monday night wine class. And so I always put out great cheese platters and meats and beautiful breads and stuff. So... And I always, I never want to waste bread because I waste bread like a crazy person. So I'm always trying to have let's don't waste bread programs. So I would wait. Let's see if everybody eats all the bread. So I'm in the middle of a wine lecture and I'm cutting bread. And all of a sudden I took the knife all the way down through the flesh of my thumb and hit my fingernail. So... The show must go on, correct? So I took this, I pinched my thumb, I put my hand over my head, I looked at somebody in the class and said, can you go up to the front and ask for the first aid kit? And I kept teaching. So the show must go on, but boy, it's always better if you don't cut yourself while you're performing. Hello, Brian. Hello, Elizabeth. So I'm going to try to get the rest of this pepper cut up real fast and tossed into my other batch, and I don't know which one is which. This is, oh, I'm not gonna need quite so much because this is my, gonna be my pineapple batch, so. Ah, here we go. Here we are, so. 
orange peppers and it doesn't matter orange peppers yellow peppers whatever you think is going to be prettier frankly if i had had different peppers if i were choosing i would use uh orange and and red simply because the yellow pepper is going to get lost beside the pineapple but you use what you what you got here in privation cooking kitchen right we use what we've got now my corn over here looks like that it is probably cooked about as much as it needs to be because right you know we know that corn doesn't need a whole lot of cooking and here we go so that's going to be nice i'm just going to reach over here and turn that off bang and get rid of some more bits and pieces for myself so let's see how's it going boys and girls hello olivier how are you today so guys, if anybody's Upper West Side or down in the in the village, Olivier has a great wine bar called Amelie. And yes, it's a wine bar, but every little morsel of food that they make is absolutely divine. So support your local restaurants if you can, please. So where are we going next? So I'm, since I've got the pineapple here, I'm just going to cut this into smaller, more bite-sized pieces. Um, because like I said this is a salsa and ideally I would envision putting a piece of like flaky white fish my friend Anna yesterday posted that she had made or actually beautiful pictures much 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 better cooks than I am so many of the people they are so willing to do the little tiny beautiful picture perfect stuff and I'm just like plump it into a bowl as long as it's delicious right um, but she had her caviar guy and her scallop guy came through for her yesterday. And I thought, I need a scallop guy. And so I think I'm going to call her scallop guy here in the next little bit. And we might do some scallop cooking because my friend Jamie Baker is the best scallop guy you've ever, scallop cooking guy you can imagine. He gets them perfect every single time. And I... And pea green with things like that but I will say that I can learn and when Jamie taught me how to make uh, crab cakes I make great crab cakes now so and it's also occurred to me things that I make that lots of other people have picked up my recipe for that might be fun to do in the future I make a tarragon chicken salad that is a absolute uh, uh, fan favorite Showstopper, Vicky says in there. We have used it a thousand times over the years to uh, uh, feed lots of ladies champagne, croissants, and delicious things. But then also, do not let me forget, if it were the normal world, we wouldn't be making these things. All I would be doing all week long is getting ready for derby. So I thought maybe while everybody has plenty of time to practice between now and September for derby, Maybe we can make some pimento cheese and uh, Benedictine. So don't let me forget, that's what I wanna do on Friday. Make pimento cheese and Benedictine. That'll get us through a lot. And then, you know, when you've got pimento cheese, if you're somewhere where you've got access to a grill, pimento cheese burgers, especially if you can do, uh, what are the kinds, Vicki, what do you call the word when you make the burger with all the melty cheese on the inside of the burger? Lucy Goosey's, Lucy, Lucy, Lucky Loose, I can't remember. Somebody can find that, figure that out for me. Um, so there you go. That was, so there's a lot of things that we can get going here in the near future. I saw today that Georgia shouldn't have reopened until June 28th. So I think my prediction that we'll be here till July 4th is going to be correct. And I've been prepared psychologically for that since the beginning. So now I think I've got a good amount here and I'm just going to save a little bit of this extra pineapple because I've got juicy some Lucy. Juicy Lucy. There we go. It's a Juicy Lucy. It's, see, I've, I've said all along all I needed was a producer in here, somebody to, you know, look up things. Be my Michael Gelman, as they say, or as I say. So here we go. Um, we're getting there. My beans here, I can take them out and put them into their pot. Uh, and now I've got the garlic. So I'm just going to use my um, my greater thing that I love so much as soon as I find where I've hidden the towels from myself. 
Um, so this is coming along. As you can see, if I weren't prattling on, that this would have been done a long time ago. Ooh, yes, and with a fried green tomato. Ooh, yeah, on your burger with the, ooh, the Juicy Lucy. And the, oh, that would be so good. Pimento cheese burgers. I think that's an idea for this weekend for everybody. So you can all cook along with me. Let me get my microplane out. Now I have moved everything around after I um, tidied up yesterday. So I'll probably be struggling for the next few weeks trying to figure out where everything is. But it really does look so much nicer in there. And after this is over with, maybe I'll take some pictures and post them for you so you can see how much nicer life is with my drawer all clean. So this is one of those things where if you wanted to, if you don't like raw garlic or somebody in your family has an issue with raw garlic, um, you could use your roasted garlic. You could maybe make your vinaigrette extra gar uh, garlic powdery, something like that. Um, so again, it's so forgiving and that's why I think that this is awesome. You don't like pineapple, you want to do it with mango, go right ahead it will work right out. You don't like mint or cilantro and you want to use basil? Why not? The only thing I wouldn't use with this would be like a mushy bean, like a navy bean. I don't think that that would be good, but I don't know of anybody that eats navy beans cold. So, hello, Michael. Um, let's see, and uh, Vicki Kelly says hello. Hi, here we go. So I'm making a terrible mess and a ton of noise. Me apologia. And get the sticky garlic off my fingers here. And oh, look what I found when I was working in my drawer yesterday. Where did I put it? Here we go. I found my crummer back from waiting tables days. And I thought, my God, I know I've lived in the same place. As a matter of fact, on Friday is my 25th anniversary of living in this apartment. So um, maybe I can get Mark Briggs to tune in because he helped me move. That's how long ago it was. I still ask my friends to help me move. <laughs> oh, golly gee. So let's see. I'm going to get some my lines all split. I've already rolled them and softened them up. I've had a little trouble with lines getting t being tight the last little bit. And I'm going to take this out. Here we go. My, those are hot. Lord have mercy. So, how funny. There we go. So those can sit there and cool off. This is my funny little, my daddy once years ago came downstairs to make coffee in the morning and went to his desk and sat down and got up, you know, five or ten minutes later, went to make a cup of coffee, and there was only like this much coffee. And he went back and sat down at his desk and came back ten minutes later, and there was maybe this much coffee. Finally, my mother is coming out of bed, and he says, Sue, something's wrong with the coffee pot. It's not working. And she says, Dickie, it's a brand new coffee pot. And so my dad goes in and looks at it. He says, this has been running for 30 minutes and there's only this much coffee. And he looks at it more closely and it's a black and decker coffee pot. And he says, well, of course it's make, not making coffee. It's not a coffee pot, it's a hammer. So that's a joke in our family, but I have a hammer of a rice maker. And I can't remember exactly how it came into my life, but I'm gonna presume many years ago, I loved a boy who was from Japan. And I'm assuming that I thought my rice game needed to take a steep, steep upward curve, and I invested in a rice steamer. I hardly ever use it to make rice, but I use it a lot in the summer because um, I do not live in the most energy efficient apartment. And so something like turning on the stove or putting on a pot full of boiling water is something that I will never, like I'll regret it the rest of the summer. I'll never get the humidity level back down here to a place where you can sleep. So yeah. Uh, so yes, Vicki is in my apartment. She has come to take a friend to the doctor. And so I'm giving her a place to sit because you know, of course no one can go into an office right now. So I'm giving her a space to be. 
but I know that she has been responsible and she's far away. <laughs> and she also brought me my favorite Grand Daisy Bakery focaccia, yum. And more importantly, paper towels. I'm very grateful for these, I can't even tell you. So, here we go. Now I'm gonna make my vinaigrette. What have I, have I done everything, I've done everything, I've just gotta still take the corn off the cob and I'm making the vinaigrette. So the same vinaigrette I use for both. Fresh lime juice, good quality olive oil, um, or if you wanna use a more neutral oil, please feel free. Salt, pepper, honey, a pinch of cayenne to taste. That's just that. You might wanna, depending on like today, I probably am not going to put the cayenne in because I've already discovered that my jalapeno is super, super hot, so it doesn't really need that. But the honey is the, is, is the one thing. The, the citrus vinaigrette with honey um, is what I think is the important piece to this that brings it all together. Um, here we go. So I've got a couple of tablespoons going here. I haven't taken the label off, but I reuse these. I love this carrot miso ginger uh, dressing that they make at Whole Foods. Um, so I save that, those jars and reuse them because they're wide mouths. They're easy to transfer stuff into. And here we go. There, perfect. hidden behind the plant. Here we go. And I eyeball that and I always make things a little uh, on the tart side because as I've explained before, I'm an acid whore. No, no dis to, no dis to whores, but I love the acid. So as you see, I'm putting acid on acid on acid and here on acid on acid on acid. Um, and we need a little pinch of salt. This is my granny salt container, which I love and cherish. It needed to go to a good home. When I put grates of pepper in, I think about a person and I graded the number of years they've been alive, so I thought of my nephew today. Um, do I need anything else in here? Yes, I need honey. Honey, honey, honey. And, uh, ooh, that's having a bad day. My honey has, one. the other honey has had a bad day and is sticking. And there we go. Honey. And then shake. So I've been doing a culture class with my niece and nephew, and at the end of each one, I've been making, we all do 50 jumping jacks together. And so yesterday, I kind of almost ran over. And I said, oh, guys, your, your new class, is, your next class is about to start. I said, so have a great day. And Kate was like, no, we've got to do our jumping jacks. I'm like, that's awesome. We have to do our jumping jacks. So here we have this. We've got this dressing, which in a perfect world, I would make a day in advance so they can all merge to get, zhuzh together. We're eventually gonna put all of this together with this, but the next thing I have to do is take my corn off. And let's just do that. Take the corn off. Oh, it's still really hot. Hi, I Sam. do not have, I do not have Teflon hands like a lot of people do. Hello, Sale. Vicki says hello. Woohoo. Oh, what wines would I pair with these dishes? So, when you do the, uh, the what am I trying to say? The pineapple, that's going to need a really high acidity white wine. So, things like if you're an Italian lover, I would look like to an Arnais. That may not, that may be too uh, minerally, and you might really want to fruit with fruit. So, Think about really more like Alsace and Northern Germany, places where you get tons of fruit and screamingly high acidity. Um, uh, if money is no option, why don't you try out some of those great new sparkling wines from England? 
but the investment that was necessary to start all those vineyards uh, is costly, and so those wines are every bit as expensive as Champagne. So it's not like my beloved friend, the Cremant, which is uh, uh, gentle on the pocketbook, right? Uh, so that's why I say if you, for some reason, the ends of my corn turned a strange color that I can't identify, so I'm going to just take that off. Okay, here we go. Here, go away. There, I feel better about that. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe they dipped it in chloroform or something. I love, this was my favorite thing as a kid. My mom would put up corn in the summer and eating the whole big, like, long strip of corn. Taking it to the cupboard, putting a little pinch of salt on it. Hey, Scrab, how you doing, bubby? So, and you can't have enough corn off the cob in my name, in my world, except if you're having corn on the cob. And one thing I always do when I have corn on the cob is I make a lime jalapeno butter that then you can drizzle that right on there. Scrib, yes, your mother is right here. She is right here. Do you need to talk to her? Don't call her on the phone. Hello, Muggsy. Oh, they're, both right they're both right here, Svec. Hi, guys. So we know where all the Laurel Arts are right now. They're all accounted for. And there we go. So, we have, I believe, all the components in here. We have corn, we have black beans, we have Alyssa's trinity of red onion, bell pepper, and, uh, and garlic, right? Yes. Uh, and then this needs still some cilantro, and this has all the same things, but also needs some mint. You could also do that with basil, I think, which would be just as good. And so I'm going to reach over here and I'm actually give myself a little of this. Clean myself some space off here. And I am, ooh, I don't think I've washed this. I have not. So I'm just going to take a chunk of this and give it a whack, like cutting hair. Let's see. Yeah, see, Vic, Vicky's a great sideline producer. Could I start having like daily guests, people being my being my producers? I would love that. I think it's a great idea. It's a fun way. You know, like I said the other day, that when I went to help Tom fix his phone, without thinking, we accidentally high fived each other, and I went fifty five days. It was fifty five days. Um, but I have not high-fived Vicky yet today, so there's that. So, um, I'm a big believer that when you're doing these things, you don't have to get it totally, you know, minced up perfectly. If you wanted to use your scissors and scissor this cilantro, you could totally do that. Um, you do not have to pick the leaves off of the stems because the stems are just as flavorful or more so than the actual, woo, the leaves, see there's me, about to cut my finger off. Oh yeah, I did, I cut my nail off, nice. Took it right off. Now, do I have to go find my nail in there? Oh, I think I do. Let's see. Yeah, it's my fingernail and nobody's gonna really eat but me. Oh, well I might have to serve Vicky some. The problem Let's see. with not getting a manicure. Okay, there's the problem with not getting a manicure, right? It's the one thing I really, really miss. Me too. Let's see. Oh yeah, well no flesh, just 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 the collagen. So I'm gonna say that's okay. Here we go. There's that, and then let's get a hunk of mint uh, over here. Uh, oh, that's still pretty salty or it was sandy. So let's give that a super good rinse. Ah, uh, heaven smells like basil. I love that. Um, I once had some friends walk in and say, "Oh my gosh, your whole house smells like basil," and I thought, mm -hmm. Basil? <laughs> so here we go. Is this feeling good? I'm gonna put this here and see. Give that a real good rinse and see if that's my rough hands or sand on my mint. There we go. Okay. So one thing I'll say about this is that what this is a great kind of thing because you can very simply kind of have that onions red peppers, garlic, 
all together and just kind of pop it into, um, you have it sitting there and then you can mix it in with anything. Again, this is such a great like beach thing because it's so versatile and so forgiving um, that and everybody likes it. There's not anything that nobody likes. And if there is, you can make that tweak. If you've got a no, uh, a no cilantro person in your family and you've, allowed, and you've allowed them to continue to be a part of your family, well, you've learned how to make those concessions for them, right? So you know what to do. Like I say, cooking is an art, baking is a science. So anybody can do art, right? We're not trying to Jackson Pollock this thing or Mark Rothko it. All we have to do is pass kindergarten, right? That's all that matters. So there we go. This is here, boom, boom. And I think I'm gonna toss this around with my hands because why not? Look how beautiful that is. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. It's, we don't wanna mix our cilantro and mint today. That might not be exactly the right thing to do. Yes, Kelly, we're going to the beach, I promise you. Do not worry, the beach is in our future. I promise. Not in May. Well, not in May. We're not going to the beach in May. I'm shooting for August and September and maybe more. So there we go. We've got our things mixed together here. And then all I need to do is test my vinaigrette, make sure it's good enough. My hands are so wet, I can't do anything. Here we go. There we go. Ta-da. Okay, let's see what we've got here. Oh, that's so good. I'm just gonna give a little drizz. You don't need a lot because you might want to use these, uh, use this on salads. So, right, you might want to dress your greens with this salad dressing also, or you might want to put, make it more southwest. Maybe you take this, dress your greens with something creamy, and put cumin scented chicken breasts on them. Um, there's just, there's literally no end. As I always say to my clients, the only limitations we have are our budget and our imaginations. And that's what these two dishes are. They are, you are only limited by your budget and imagination. I promise you, if you served this on the side with a lobster roll, people would talk about it for the next three weeks. So that's my, that's my deal today, guys. That was a lot of work. I, not, not, not a lot of work. It just was a lot to get done. I have no idea how long I've been barking at you. 35 minutes. Holy cow. So anyway, I love you as always. And I thank you for sitting here and watching all of this. It's been nice having Vicki here. So now I know I really do need a producer. Um, and I look forward to having that a little bit more as we go along, hopefully. So guys, you know what the drill is. Take care of yourself. Do something good for yourself. It's a beautiful day here in New York, and they say it's going to go right back to crappy tomorrow. So get yourself outside. Walk around the block. Go see some trees. Go see some green. Get some sunlight. Get some vitamin D in the rods and cones of your eyes. It goes straight to your brain and makes you happier. Um, take care of yourself, and then see if you can find somebody to take care of something kind to do for somebody else. Feed your neighbor. Run an errand for somebody. Send somebody a card. Spread some joy in whatever way you can. I love you all. Thank you for coming. See you later. Tomorrow, don't let me forget, it's Derby Week. We're going to make some Derby stuff. Ciao.